Hi guys, this is video four in our discussion of chapter six, uh, which is about the gross domestic product. Uh, now that we understand the concept of national income or gross domestic product, we can ask how we use that concept or why do we need that concept? So uh, part of our need for a concept like GDP is inbuilt into the concept of GDP. GDP measures the total sum of all economic activity, production and consumption that is taking place in an economy. And so in a way, in, in a very elemental sense, we can use movements in GDP to assess whether the economy is becoming more healthy or less healthy. So when GDP grows, um, um, we, we economists believe that the size of economic activity, the size of consumption, the size of production is growing, and hence the health of the economy is improving. When GDP falls or contracts, we believe that economic activity is contracting or falling, which is not a good sign in terms of the health of the economy, right? And so now that we um, know that GDP is a, is a measure of the health of the economy, we can use movements in GDP to analyze a very important phenomenon that affects almost every um, uh, country in the world, which is that of a business cycle. In fact, our goal at the end of this um, a course in principles of macroeconomics, our goal is to understand why business cycles uh, come about in the first place, number one, and number two, whether there's something maybe that we can do about reducing um, the, the size of the business cycle. So what exactly is a business cycle? Um, if we look at the graph here um, in the lower part of the screen, you'll see that if we were to plot um, time on the horizontal axis and GDP on the vertical axis, um, GDP doesn't really grow along uh, in, a, in a nice, smooth, linear manner like as shown by the blue line. The long run trend of, say, American GDP has always been upward sloping. The problem is that GDP in, uh, uh, does not, um, uh, you know, it lurches around sometimes. So here we see in the initial years, we see that GDP is growing and, uh, you know, the economy is expanding, um, economic growth or what we can call a boom or an expansion. And then the economy repeaks. And following that, we see some time period in which the economy is contracting. So this is essentially what is a business cycle, that um, GDP grows and then contracts and then grows again and then contracts. Even though the long run trend is upward sloping, we have these swings or fluctuations um, in GDP. This is what's called a business cycle. Now, how do we measure a business cycle? It is met, an expansion is measured from a trough, which is the bottoming out of the economy uh, to the peak. So this could take 18 months. It could take five years. It could take 10 years for an economy to come out of a deep depression, which is essentially what this trough is, and to reach its peak again. Right. And so whatever the duration of this time period is, that's called a expansion. On the other hand, um, um, you can also measure it from uh, peak to trough. So currently, the American economy, I would say, is like at a peak right now. Unemployment is really low. GDP is really high. And so any day now, we feel that we will start to see this of uh, a contraction coming coming along as the economy kind of corrects from its um, uh, from its um, from its boom. Okay. Um, the one word in this slide that I haven't really explained at all right now um, is the word real. So what does it mean uh, when I say real GDP, not just GDP? So. As you know, GDP was a very clear, a clever concept because it took apples and oranges and corn and cars and multiplied the physical quantities produced of all these goods with their prices. And uh, that gave us market value of production of each product, which is in dollar terms. And now I can add up all these dollars and come up with, uh, with, um, with the norm GDP. The problem is that when I see a growth in GDP, say from, from, here, from the trough here all the way up to here, when GDP is growing, now I get a little confused. Is, are the prices of corn and cars rising, which can also lead to an increase in um, GDP? Or is it the physical quantities 
of the production of corn and cars that are rising, which is essentially, you know, what is important in terms of the health of the economy. An increase in prices of corn and cars, not so healthy. An increase in the production of physical quantities of corn and cars, very healthy. So how can we disentangle these movements in prices um, uh, from movements in, in the actual production quantities of products? This disentangling comes about when we use the concept of real GDP. So essentially, real GDP is GDP, which has been corrected for movements in prices. Um, And so when real GDP moves, we are very sure that um, this is due to uh, movements in physical production quantities, not due to movements in prices, right? So uh, this idea of real is applied extensively throughout this course. This idea of real be it GDP, real income, real salary, um, real interest rate, real exchange rate, um, is very important for you to understand um, in your day-to-day lives as well. And so um, we're going to have um, several practice exercises, um, and I'll also put up a short uh, video uh, which sort of stresses on this idea of real, right? How do we abstract away from, uh, from changes in prices? Um, So essentially, what have we learned from this slide? This graph right here is what we are trying to understand through the entirety of this course in macroeconomics. Why do we see these short run fluctuations in GDP? And what happens during these fluctuations when the economy is moving, um, is going through a contraction phase, moving from a peak to a trough, essentially, which is a recession? What happens to the economy when uh, when the economy is moving from a trough to a peak, essentially when the economy is going through a boom period, right? That is our end goal. Um, and that is our end goal to understand this particular figure, um, figure in this course. Um, this figure here is not um, is not theoretical, right? This shows you actual American GDP, real GDP and um, annual GDP. And we can, the blue bars over here show you the periods in which economic activity was contracting. So they show you the recessions. So we can see recessions are quite frequent. About every five to seven to 10 years, we see um, we see a downswing or a recession. Some of them are really long in duration, like this one in the mid 70s. And of course, the biggest one, which has happened in your lifetime, which is called the Great Recession that started in 2008 and um, and um, lasted for a really long time. In fact, some estimates believe that it was only in by 2014 that the American economy finally sort of started recovering from the long term effects of the Great Recession. So the secondary aim of this course and my aim as a as a teacher of um, macroeconomics is to help you understand this massive economic event, which has affected almost everything about your lives. It has affected um, uh, your the, your choice of major. It has affected which a profession you're going to get employed in. It has affected whether your parents um, were able to help you pay for school or you had to take a full loan. It has affected the value of um, the house that your parents may own and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, this event, once you've understood it, the, this event carries... Um, 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 an understanding of this event will give you um, sort of information and wisdom, which will help you to make better financial choices or just better um, economic choices moving forward, not just as a business person or not just as a person, a financial analyst at Goldman Sachs, but just generally as a citizen who wants to live their best life possible.